Hello, hello. Welcome to the build guide for the Elemental Hit Raider. Uh, you can also choose Deadeye, but I'm going with the Raider for the guide and the purposes of the video. And I just wanted to go over uh, quickly the intro for this type of character. It is actually the most powerful, versatile, and just overall amazing character that I've played, other than maybe Aura stacking back before they killed the dead uh, by nerfing all the clusters and everything. Um, this character is insanely, insanely damage heavy, very fast, uh, especially once you get going with flasks and everything like that. Just an absolute beast of a build, and I love it. And uh, if you end up trying it, I hope you do too. It has a decent starting cost, I would say. Uh, starting at a few X for a minimum, you really don't want to go in with nothing and no investment and 5C to your name. This is not a uh, League Start friendly build. It requires some chase items that at this point are pretty easy to obtain in the League. Um, but day one and two, they're going to be very, very expensive. Things like the Zov's Blood and Azanath's Chant uh, are pretty, pretty required, I would say, to actually play the build in the version that I do, which is the fire damage version, the most popular at the moment. It is very, very, very easy to play. You have, what, three buttons? Uh, you can actually get away with just using your Ellie hit, your, you know, main clearing one, and then single target bossing. You can use Vol Haste if you feel like it, Blood Rage if you want, Dash, you know, whatever. It's literally like a three button build, four button build. It's insanely easy and incredibly powerful. Absolutely love it. Um, it is good at every type of content, which, that kind of sounds crazy, but I have not experienced anything other than Heist uh, that it is not good at. Even in Heist, it's pretty good, but it can be sort of rippy and prone to one-shots, and we all know how Heist is with those. So that's the only problem that I've encountered so far. I have, um, I've tried a few contracts, and it's fine until you pretty much get one-shot, as with all evasion and dodge-based builds. It's really hard to scale life on this build. Um, but again, that usually doesn't matter unless you're doing things where if you die, it's, it's like permanent. So it's not a hardcore-friendly build, to clarify. Um, it's also not solo self on friendly, like I said. Requires some chase uniques, uh, Zof's blood, as an ass chant, things like that. Um, to clarify, as an ass chant isn't really required, but it definitely adds quite a lot of damage, and it also adds a lot of quality of life. It gives you four extra buttons that you don't have to press. Um, which right now I'm using Lightning Golem, Combustion Wave Conviction, Sniper's Mark. So I guess technically three buttons. This build versus other ones that I've done this league, it doesn't compare super well to like the hardcore solo self on slammer that I played earlier in the league. There's absolutely nothing similar other than maybe being able to craft your own uniques um, and creating your own power through doing that. But there's there's nothing similar. This build is um, similar, I guess, to like Ice Shot and how it plays, but not in how it feels. I played Ice Shot this league and it felt significantly weaker uh, through any type of scaling that I tried. So I definitely, definitely would recommend in uh, I, would, I would definitely recommend an Ellie hit over pretty much anything else that I've played this league, which has been probably, what, 10 builds now? Probably nearing a dozen at this point, just cycling through, seeing what I enjoy. Uh, this one's currently level 98. Uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the build. Bossing. The bossing on this build is absolutely absurd. The amount of damage that you can do in a split second to any boss by just pressing your flasks and then just barraging them, and you have mana leech, so you don't actually have to worry about the auto-attacking, is absurd. You can phase the Maven insanely quickly, even with a headhunter on, with no rares to have killed beforehand. Um, if you have something like an Inspired Learning, which I recommend, or a headhunter, you are just going to absolutely blast everything single target anyway, so it's no big deal. But aside from that, if you're doing like Cirrus, or your Conquerors or anything, and you're going in with no buffs, using a rare belt maybe, there are definitely some rare belts that you can get uh, with mods that are absolutely absurdly, absurdly strong for single target, like elemental damage with attacks, projectile hit damage, things like that. Um, and it just deletes bosses. It's pretty tanky against bosses, uh, as long as you know sort of what you're looking for on them. I wouldn't say it is a noob-friendly build if you don't know anything about any of the bosses. There's a lot of... Like mechanics that you would have to watch out for, otherwise you're prone to one shots. As you can see, I have 3,700 health here with 200 ES, so close to around 4,000 HP, somewhere around there. Um, survivability, I was just talking about that. It's like a, I, I would give it like near an A, A minus probably, because it's really, really good at surviving, but it is very prone to one shots and very difficult to scale any amount of life. Unfortunately, we are um, kind of stuck with scaling a lot of damage unless you kind of wanted to like build a variance 
version where you go for scaling a lot of survivability but stick with not speed clearing every single thing that you see. Um, you know, with putting life on rings over LA damage, things like that. Damage for clearing uh, is absolutely S tier. So the farming strategy that I've been doing is actually Nemesis on Baldo's Rest with all of the Harbinger Watchstones here. And I would just roll basically for the Nemesis. Let's see if we can get it real quick for the Sextant. And basically, as soon as you roll the Nemesis Sextant, you go in and you delete the packs of Harbingers as soon as they spawn, which is the reason that I actually recommend using a Inspired Learning, because it helps in an insane amount when you are killing a ton of rares that it, they are spawning. Um, with the variance of this build, I would say that there is a lot you can change, but also I believe that the meta is a meta for a reason. There is quite a few people playing this at the end game on Raiders, and trying to change that may work out for you. Um, trying to change, you know, the stats on the bow and the quiver and how you scale it may work out for you, but I highly recommend following the meta. Like I said, it's there for a reason. People are using it for a reason. It's very strong. This build is very strong without having to make any changes, and there's quite a few resources that you can find things on for it. Um, a lot of people struggle like mid, early mid league with continuing upgrading their build because they feel like, hey, maybe it's finished. Um, this build is a lot like aura stacking or um, anything to do with, I don't know, really, really in-game scaling. It is very similar. There is always something that you can upgrade until you have mirrored every item that you have. So because we use so many rares with rings, chest piece, bow... You can use gloves and boots, um, and the quiver are all going to be rare. You can basically chase after all mirror tier items in every slot except for your head and your necklace. And it is definitely, definitely always able to be upgraded. There's a lot of money sinking that you can do, but it is not required. Is the build expensive? I would say yes in general for the aforementioned upgrades. So you can get more and more expensive items, but every item that you upgrade will make you feel significantly more powerful and a lot of other builds that i played it's been sort of a situation where you would pay for like a 10x upgrade and you're like whoa this this looks like it's going to be insane and everybody says it's going to be so good and then you get into a map and you're like i pretty much don't feel any different and it's it's not fun whereas with this build i went from a death opus to this bow right here it was about 25x at the time it's appreciating in value thankfully and it blew my dps out of the water from previously and then same thing with the chest, applying an additional curse with attack crit, absolutely absurd. Um, this has frenzy charges on it, which is pretty much the main reason I have it. Dark Ray Vectors are pretty cheap, a really good option for you. Um, you will definitely feel it if you just upgrade from a pair of life and res boots. Um, they're also pretty tanky through providing you a lot of dodge for attack hits per frenzy charge because we cap out at like 9, 10, maybe 11 frenzy charges. Very, very strong in that regard. Like I said, there is a lot of dodging going on in this build. Um, so the build cost, like I said just earlier, you want to go in with probably a handful of X to get started. You need a, I would say, Death's Opus 6 linked to start. If you if you want to scale into red maps early is what I mean. So you can obviously start the build with all, all rares that are all kind of trash. Five links, doesn't matter, for much cheaper. Do some low tier maps with it, no big deal. But if you want to make the build really come online and just absolutely decimate the game, you're definitely going to want to go in with a handful of exalts um, minimum to help you out there. Uh, I have some leveling trees available in the POB that I will have in the description here. I have quite a bit of leveling that we do. We do leveling with Caustic Arrow, Toxic Rain, um, just very basic Quill Rain, Tabula, Gold Rim. Um, you know, seven league steps. It's already a very zoomy build. You really don't need seven league steps. The Ranger in general has all three of the ascendancies are very fast. Um, the Raider specifically, in my opinion, has been the most smooth uh there are definitely early mapping trees that you can go through on here as well before you know you get to level 90 plus there's like some where it kind of guides you in the direction where you need to go for each section of the leveling process through maps red maps yellow maps white maps um however many points you have available at the time um so if you don't have clusters you are going to feel significantly weaker just because that's the nature of the build and the nature of the meta at the moment Clusters are absolutely absurdly powerful if you stack them a lot. So even just using one with, you know, Martial Prowess, Feed the Fury, Fuel the Fight, Calamitous, any of these things, you will definitely feel the power coming online for sure. Um, pressure Points, Quick Getaway. This is Chance to deal double damage with our Crit Strikes, and we're going to be critting a lot. There is going to be a lot of critting going on in this build. We are a crit-based build with Crit Multi, 
which is actually funny because the way that we scale our build is much easier than scaling a lot of other builds that are crit based we can scale with any three of the critical strike multiplier tags for elemental so you have the fire cold and lightning elemental hit has all of these tags so it has melee tag strike tag fire cold lightning aoe attack projectile and bow for crit strike multi so it is it is very very easy to scale crit strike multi after scaling after you've been able to scale all of your crit finding jewels for it is much cheaper than uh, it would be for any that use specifically lightning where you have to go with spells lightning elemental you can just go fire cold elemental spells bow literally anything it's it's uh much easier than than any other build that i've tried scaling crit on um cost wise and efficiency wise gym links for the single target i opted to put that into this bow for when i'm killing bosses and such um because it gives them plus level so i have elemental hit and barrage which basically turns it all into a stream of projectiles that all hit i have anomalous hypothermia which has a chance to freeze enemies that are chilled which is pretty strong against like map bosses not going to work against you know maven or Sirius or anything like that because we're not doing that much cold damage but we do have skitter bots that are chilling them so it's just doing 41 percent more cold damage to enemies that are chilled uh awakened elemental focus you can go with normal 2020 for all of these is totally fine um awakened Elemental damage with attacks. This one is very, very good scaling for us. It is a 60% more multiplier with a 20% increased. And I believe it's like a 54% on a level 21 skill gem without being awakened. And then Anomalous Inspiration helps with the crit chance rather than the minus mana cost or the Inspiration charge duration. So definitely, if you can, this is going to be one of the small upgrades that you can make. I don't even know how much this is. Yeah, it's about 2x if you want to buy it. Uh, definitely worth for the extra crit chance when you are trying to kill bosses. Getting more crits, getting more better. Bigger number, better person. For the clear, I have it on my chest piece. For the other six link, elemental hit, uh, awakened chain, hypothermia, mirage archer, divergent inspiration for the mana cost, uh, just because I started leveling up a precision on accident, doesn't matter. And then again, awaken elemental damage with attacks. You can use a normal one, not that big of a deal. For the auras, we are going to go with uh, an enlighten. You can definitely run. Uh, and Enlightened 3, even in Enlightened 2 would probably work. I just leveled this up on a different character and haven't unleveled it yet. I use Divergent Precision. You can use Normal. We just need the Accuracy. Um, and the Crit Strike is very strong. We're going to be using Anger for the Flat Added Fire. Very, very strong. And the Skitterbots, which chills and shocks the enemies. So they take increased damage because they're shocked and they're chilled. Which is a lot of tankiness and it enables us to use Hypothermia. Um, quality isn't super important on this. If you get a normal Skitterbots, uh, it's minion movement speed. They kind of just do their own thing anyways. It's not a big deal. Um, for the utility, we have Blood Rage for e very, very easy Frenzy Charge uh, generation. Leech, attack speed. Um, and we're not going to be taking that much damage over time because we do so much with the Leech. It'll be totally fine. Uh, Dash, I use Anomalous just because I bought it the other day and wanted to feel bougie. Boil myself a little bit. Uh, Second Wind for both of these, actually. Move on to Whale Haste here. We use Vol Haste just as the cooldown. We don't actually reserve it at any point in time just because we don't have the mana for it. But having it as an extra cooldown when you are going to delete a boss at the end of a map or something, definitely a nice little nice little benefit. It's good for, you know, clearing legions or clearing any big amount of things in a small amount of time. It gives us the extra attack speed. Very strong. Uh, and then in the helmet, with the which is the Azanath's Chant, these gems are actually pretty important to have in this specific item because you trigger a socketed spell when you attack with a bow, which we are doing all the time, and it only has a 0.3 second cooldown. So right now, I have Anomalous Summon Lightning Golem um, because I'm generating power charges through having a Headhunter and a Inspired Learning in my tree over here, so I don't have to worry about that. Normally, you would run Power Charge on Crit with Combustion, Sniper's Mark, and Wave of Conviction. Um, the Wave of Conviction can be swapped out for anything. I was using Volatile Dead or Detonate Dead just to get rid of corpses for a while to see how that felt. You can use Purifying Flame. It can be literally anything because we don't need the exposure. The exposure is overridden by the fact that we are a raider um, and then for the flasks we have a cinder swallow right here bottled faith dying sun diamond flask of staunching i don't need it to be staunching i would actually prefer that it was warding but again i've just been moving around a lot of characters i'm probably going to reroll this for curse immunity soon and then a wise oak um if you are feeling up for it you can definitely swap out your wise oak for a quicksilver flask which is going to make you feel absolutely insanely fast while mapping um let me just find a random map and throw it in real quick and show you what the mapping experience looks like as this build 
you basically just throw your map in. And after you start shooting things, you start moving quickly. And after you start moving quickly, you start moving more quickly, even without a headhunter. I could actually, if I could unequip it, I would, but I strength requirements at the moment. But as soon as you start shooting things, you are basically going to come online and start moving insanely quickly. I don't have any idea as to why it's so insanely fast, um, other than the fact that it is just an amazing build in general. Um, there's a lot of different scaling factors for the movement speed and clear speed, and as you can see, it just sort of annihilates everything. Uh, it looked similar, even with worse gear. It moves similar, even with worse gear. There's not, like, inherently any crazy thing I'm doing for movement speed right now, um, other than the inspired learning. And it's stacking with the headhunter, so it's getting doubled whatever I'm adding onto it. But in general, the build's mapping capabilities, because of the chains that we have and the AoE on elemental hit, constantly just annihilating every pack, with the Mirage Archer as well, is insanely, insanely good. So that was pretty much the entire map. Um, granted, you know, not rolled, anything like that, but just a quick example of how mapping looks when you're using a Quicksilver and just throwing yourself at a map. It is absolutely very fast, very enjoyable, lots of damage, very good money sink. Um, the gear is actually really pretty much simple, aside from the required uniques, which also um, are the combat focus Viridian Jewel. The Viridian has to go in this slot here because it has to have Dexterity and Radius, um, and it has to be Viridian so that it can't choose Lightning. And then over here, you go for the Crimson combat focus. Uh, I got Corrupted Blood on this, very expensive. You don't need that. You can get it on any other Jewel. Um, again, just feeling bougie at the time. Strength and Radius has to go here, and it can't choose Cold. So it's always going to choose Fire no matter what, even though normally Elemental Hit will rotate between the three, which is a pretty cool interaction. It's really hard to scale three different types of damage effectively. And then we're going to run Zof's Blood, which gives us cover enemies in Ash and Avatar Fire, as well as 12% Fire Penetration if you quality it with Elemental Damage modifiers, Fire Resistance, 10% Life, lots of Strength. Um, you can actually put Attributes, uh, catalyst on this, Intrinsic Catalyst. If you are having any strength issue requirements, um, your belt is another really good place to fill that in. Any of the jewelry slots, really. And then your rings, you're just going to go for, you know, um, elemental damage with attacks, fire damage with attacks, um, fill out your reses first of all, get life uh, until you feel tanky enough, and then it helps you fill out your accuracy. Um, getting accuracy outside of the tree can help us free up a lot of skill points so that we can use those skill points later into cluster jewels like before i got my second cluster jewel setup i was stuck with acuity and also with depth perception because scaling accuracy can be difficult uh, but i did end up getting it right here on this ring 479 has fire damage to attacks it has mana not really the best ring in the world but definitely definitely a uh, functional piece of equipment so a lot of it is plug and play you just kind of throw on as much life and resistance as you can and then start scaling your damage and make sure that your reses are kept and that is just about everything that I have. Um, there are some farming strategies that I'm going to go over in separate videos. You guys can look out for those on the YouTube channel. I'm going to go over how I got to this point on the build um, early on, what I did, and then what I scaled into and started farming later on. And also, I'm going to be live every day on twitch.tv slash Caligoose. That is going to be where I'm live 3 p.m. Central. Every day, I will probably be participating in the class gauntlet from Zizarin and PoE. And if you have any questions about the build, you are more than welcome to join me over there. I don't have too much more for you, so thank you for watching. Check out the Semantics podcast on this YouTube channel or Beanie's Bro PoE YouTube channel. And y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day, night, wherever you're out in the world. Peace.